Hi folks, this is Chef Kevin. I'm standing on my porch outside my house. So tonight I've been invited to a sunset Halloween type party in the community here, just a few houses down. And this will be a good opportunity for me to, to meet some of the local people since I only know a few. So that would be good. And uh, I'm going to bring a couple of things to the party, things to eat. And I hope I make a good impression on them. One of the things I'm going to be bringing is a pumpkin that I will be braising pork in. So this is a pork braised pumpkin. And it's quite unusual. I think the presentation itself will impress people. I mean, this is what chefs like to do. And I'm also bringing some uh, mousse a la chocolate, chocolate mousse, homemade of course. And uh, I think that'll go over well if it's easy. So uh, let me show you how to do this pork. This is really quite unusual. Okay, folks. Cider braised pork inside of a pumpkin. I'm definitely not playing it safe today. I like to give these people a good impression. If you play it safe in cooking, you don't go anywhere. And the same applies for, for life in general. Let's take a look at the ingredients here. Okay folks, to be honest with you, I've never done this dish before, but I'm sure I can pull it off. There's only seven ways to cook food. This is braising, is one of the seven ways to cook food. So once you have the fundamentals down, you can braise just about anything. Braising is a method where the protein, which in this case is the pork, is cooked in a liquid, but the liquid does not cover the pork entirely, or only like three quarters of the way. So this is the protein, this is pork butt, Boston pork butt. I have six pounds, and what I'm going to do is cut these up, of course. This is actually a cut off the shoulder, not the butt. And the braising liquid is Bold Rock Hard Cider. I am not playing it safe. A little red pepper for color an onion, have some baby carrots, I'm going to glaze those over as a side dish. I have some fresh rosemary and this of course is the pumpkin, it is huge. This is going to take about four hours of cooking time. It's almost one o'clock, I got to get right into this, the party's at 5 30. Okay let's prep this pumpkin. I'm going to cut the top off first, but I'm not going to cut it flat. I'm going to cut it at an angle. Just going to stick the knife in there and just continue to turn it. There we go. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just take out all the seeds and all the filaments or whatever that's called. I'm not quite sure.
Now if you want you could use these pumpkin seeds for making some type of munchie but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put that in the compost pile. I just don't want to deal with that right now. So here we have it folks. A nice little pumpkin bucket. I ended up using a, a large spoon. Okay, next step is the meat prep. Okay, this is the Boston butt. And it's a bone-in, bone-in cut, and there's a natural seam here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Cut off that excess fat. Now this is a very inexpensive cut. This was four dollars a pound. Actually less I think. Let me see. Three fifty a pound. And it's a cheap cut. And this is really only intended to be used for slow, co slow cooking. Like in a stew or a braise. It's loaded with connective tissue and that tissue will break down over the long cooking process and become quite easy to chew. You won't you wouldn't want to use this as a steak for example. I'm trying to cut the pieces into fairly similar sizes. Okay, that's just one batch. I, I have a fairly large frying pan, but I don't uh, can only put in so much at a time. So, Gonna put some Himalayan pink sea salt on that. And I'm gonna use a fair amount. Fresh ground pepper. I'm going to use some cumin. I think that'll go very well with the pork. These inside too. Sea salt, cumin. Okay. What I'm not going to do now is just sprinkle a little flour. And what this does is going to act as a thickening agent for the sauce, the gravy. And when you roast it, when you fry it, 
you bring out the nutty flavor in flour that you wouldn't get otherwise. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, these are going into the saute pan. Start cooking. Okay, the idea is just to brown the meat. Make it nice and caramelized on the outside. Going to throw in some onion. Not going to take too long. Okay, these are almost done. I just flipped them over. As you can see, they got a nice little coloring on the outside, nice and brown. That's batch one. I have a second batch to do. And I threw in a little Herbe de Provence. This is a mixture, a dry mix, of course, of oregano, thyme, and lavender. I think that'll go really, really well with the pork. Okay, I added the red pepper, the rest of the onion, the garlic I just really smashed in half and threw in there. This is supposed to be rustic. This is my second batch. Hopefully this will fill up the pumpkin. That's a huge pumpkin. Okay, I have my pork saute off with the onions, the garlic, the pepper, red pepper. Gonna go ahead and fill this gourd up. It smells so good already, maybe I ought to just serve it like this. Nah, let's do it the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and put a sprig of rosemary in there. Okay, it looks like I came up a little short. I have some extra beef, sorry, some extra pork. So I'm gonna saute that off quickly and then fill it up to the top. Okay, so that's more like it. Hard cider. That uh, was 12 ounces. Okay, I'm going to put that inside of a cast iron skillet here. And this is good because it has two handles. This thing weighs about 20 pounds, I think. Okay, it's going in the oven. 
four hours, 350. Wish me luck. Well, there it is, folks. Let's hope this goes over well. Looks good. Well, this is it, folks. I think it came out pretty nice. Okay, folks. It seems the cider braised pork in a pumpkin was quite the hit. Everybody seemed to love it. And it was a very unusual presentation. The only thing is, if I was to do it again, I wouldn't use so much liquid. Because I noticed that as the pumpkin cooked, the water from the pumpkin, inside the pumpkin, uh, leached out into the pumpkin and actually made it too full. But at least I was able to catch it and take some of that liquid off because you don't want the whole thing to be full of liquid. It's supposed to be braised, not boiled. So I would use less liquid than I did. That was a 12 ounce, actually that was like 18 ounces of cider beer. Uh, probably like a cup would have actually been enough. And uh, the cooking time only ended up being two hours. I thought it was going to be more than that. Two hours at 375 degrees. And uh, the pork, I tested it with a thermometer, so it was like 145, which is good because you don't want to overcook the pork. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I appreciate the comments and questions you may have. Hasta la vista, baby.